Hello there friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan. In our last video, we took a look at the crazy amount of engineering required to sustain life on Coruscant, a planet that is completely covered in duracrete and has zero natural biomes. This was a planet that controlled its weather using satellites, produced its atmosphere using giant air scrubbers, and most of the food and products that were consumed by the citizens of Coruscant came from an extremely complicated web of trade rounds that ran from every distant corner of the galaxy. Today we're going to be taking a look at a planet that at first glance might seem like the exact opposite of Coruscant. This is a planet that is rich in both animal and plant life. We of course are talking about the planet of Kaishek. Now, if we take a closer look at the history of Kaishik, we'll start to notice that it actually is kind of artificial in its own unique way, which makes it kind of similar to Coruscant. And it's that artificial, I guess, terraforming that's done to this planet that makes it so deadly for most forms of life that have not evolved there. So for those of you who don't know, Kaishik is the homeworld of the Wookiees, one of the most fearsome and powerful creatures in the Star Wars galaxy. They're known for their temper, their loyalty, and perhaps even more importantly, their ability to rip limbs off of an individual who's pissed them off. And here's the thing, Wookiees, as terrifying and big as they seem, well, on Kaishik, they're not even at the top of the food chain. They're a little lower than that. They're, they're kind of far down towards the middle. Yeah, the Wookiees aren't apex predators. Instead, they live a very humble and holistic and complementary lifestyle to the forest they live in. They respect their planet, and they also probably fear it in a relatively healthy way. It's really humbling to live on Kaishik, no matter how big you are. And I think it's because the Wookiees lived on Kaishik and evolved there. That's probably why wherever they go in the rest of the galaxy, they just kick ass. And that's because Kaishik more or less forced the Wookiees to evolve in order to survive the harsh conditions on the planet. So contrary to what most people think, uh, Kaishik is not this natural oasis of vegetation and life. Just like Coruscant, there were hands meddling with this planet uh, a very long time ago. Kashyyyk Legends was terraformed by the ancient Rakatan Infinite Empire. The Rakatans were a dark side aligned militarized society that had taken over much of the core regions of the galaxy. They wanted to turn Kashyyyk into an agricultural planet, and so they would begin to make the soil more fertile. They would bring in seeds for new plants, bring new animals, build an ecosystem that was designed to feed the Rakatan Infinite Empire. This is why Kashyyyk has more megaflora than anywhere in the galaxy. This planet was basically turned into one gigantic farm. As a matter of fact, when the Galactic Empire took over and occupied Kaishi during the Galactic Civil War, they razed a lot of the forests and started creating farmland. It also should be noted that the planet of Kashyyyk has no tilt in it and has a perfectly circular orbit. I'm not really sure if the Rakans were responsible for this, but it basically means the planet has no changing seasons. It just has one long continuous season with very little discernible change in climate throughout the entire uh, rotation of Kaishik around its star. The tilt in our planet is what gives us summer and winter and everything in between. It gives us the seasons. If Earth didn't have that tilt and was more like Kaishik, well, what would happen is that gradually the planet would get colder and colder, especially at the poles, until basically only the equator regions are habitable for human beings. But thanks to the terraforming efforts of the Rakan Infant Empire, the temperatures all across Kaishik are kind of temperate. And also should be noted that about 60% of the planet is covered in ocean, and a tropical ocean belt covers the equator full of tiny little islands and beautiful coral reefs. And the rest of the planet was made up of a variety of biomes, including those massive forests that Kaishik is famous for. It's also these forests that, you know, Kaishik gets its very dangerous reputation from. On Coruscant, the city descends into the depths for many miles. This creates pockets of very dangerous areas in certain levels, full of creatures, criminals, and toxins. These areas are generally isolated, dark, and scary. Mobility is not easy, and getting lost is all a part of the experience of venturing down to the lower levels. This is why in Coruscant, no one really does venture to the lower levels if they can avoid it. Now, on Kaishik, instead of seeing, you know, dirt creek canyons that disappear into the depths. We have forests that could grow up to several kilometers high into the air. And the most famous type of tree that makes up these forests were known as the warshire. There are over a thousand different variants of warshire trees that were all different sizes and shapes and colors. And many of the Wookiees believed that these trees were either brought to this planet by the Rakatans or the terraforming made these trees grow out of control into their large size. It's also been theorized that since the Rakatan Infinite Empire collapsed, like within a generation, because of a plague, that the warshire trees on Kaishi grew out of control when the local Rakatan garrison was overrun by the Wookiee slaves, and no one was able to reverse the terraforming process. And so now we have these trees that can live up to 50,000 years old and grow 
up to several kilometers high. And these trees took over the majority of the open space on land on this planet. And so basically on all four of Kashyyyk's continents, you basically have these coastal areas where the Worcester trees are only maybe a few hundred meters high. But as soon as you venture a few miles into the denser areas of the jungle, the trees start to extend higher and higher until they're kilometers high. Suddenly the light is blotted out and you're just in darkness. It's for this reason that most Wookiee villages, especially in the interior of a continent, is built high up in the trees and well hidden from both above and below. Remember in the Bad Batch when the clones help out Gunji and they ran into that Wookiee village? Well, that village, along with many other Wookiee villages, were able to keep themselves well hidden even when the Empire took over the planet and started stripping the force away. This is why the Wookiees were able to maintain a pretty stiff resistance movement against the Empire for most of its reign. Now, the Warshire trees were incredibly important to the Wookiee people. So important that their own name and their own language you know, Wookiee means the people of the trees. The Wookiees valued the Warshire trees greatly and saw the mighty tree as the true owners of the land and merely saw themselves as just tenants and gardeners who maintained the forest. The Wookiees practiced coexistence with nature and they made use of the incredibly tough and light wood for a variety of different things. It can be used as a building material. It can be harvested for uh, water or for nutrients. It was used to build weapons and tools, houses, everything. Most Wookiee villages were led by a matriarch or patriarch shaman who had a very close connection to the woods and the forest. Oftentimes it wasn't uncommon for Wookiees to claim that they were able to communicate directly with these massive trees. Some shamans even believed that all the Warshire trees on the planet were connected in one larger network, kind of like a mycelium network. But perhaps the most practical reason why the Wookiees loved their Warshire trees is that it kept them above the ground, away from the terrifying surface of the planet in the interiors known as the Shadowlands. I don't know if you guys have ever been in a rainforest or some biome where the trees are tall and dense enough that there are actually layers of canopy that darken everything below. Well, instead of feeling like there's a lot of life in these biomes, it's actually very scary, it's very dark, and you get a sense that everything around you is just death. The Shadowlands is similar to this, but just much more extreme. First, there were these terrifying beasts like the Katarns. These were slender ambush predators who used to dominate the upper canopies of the Warshire Forest, but were eventually forced below by the Wookiees. The Wookiees actually viewed the Katarns as an important part of their own species development and evolution. Basically means they really appreciated being able to fight them, a foe that wasn't too hard that it destroyed their species, but it was hard enough of a animal to fight that it made them stronger as warriors. Then you had the Tarentatex. They were similar to Rancors, although they tended to be a bit smaller. But what made them so deadly was the poison that could be found on their horns and claws. These beasts also tend to seek out force user blood, and it's theorized it was the Sith who first mutated Rancors and turned them into these terrifying things. There are also a lot of theories that um, in the Old Republic period, uh, some type of Sith magic was used to corrupt the Shadowlands, which is why you're starting to see a lot of more dangerous animals emerge from this region. There are also all sorts of arachnids and other insects living in the Dark Shadowlands regions like the Netcaster, who roamed in packs and were very territorial. You also had the Wyshock gigantic spiders who Calcasus faced in the thousands. They could get quite large as well and were capable of laying up to a thousand eggs a year. Absolutely terrifying. Now, in general, when you are caught in the Shadowlands, the darkness is probably the first thing you're gonna notice. This is what makes everything so deadly down here, but I would actually hesitate to use a light or an open flame in these environments. Yes, most creatures in these lower levels are not used to such intense light and it will allow you to break contact somewhat, but that light will also attract every creepy crawler in the vicinity towards you. Now, in order to survive the jungles of Kashyyyk, you have to really be with the locals. Otherwise, the only way you're gonna make it through the jungles is with flamethrower tanks. But then again, you're still fighting the forest instead of becoming a part of it. The path of least resistance is the best way to really find yourself in the forest, but only a Wookiee that has been enlightened truly understands all the dangerous things down below. As a matter of fact, one of the most important moments in a young male uh, Wookiee's life is when they're 12 years old and they're going through this uh, coming to age process, they actually have to venture down to the forest floor, retrieve some type of resource and make it back alive. Now, obviously these young Wookiees have prepared themselves for this trial. They learn about the various dangers in the Shadowlands and how to deal with them. They learn about the various ways to make shelter and harvest usable food stuff. The idea of this trial was for the young Wookiee to unlock what's known as uh, Rakator, 
or inner strength. It also should be noted that Wookiees basically age like humans in the beginning of their life. They were considered adults when they became 18 years old, but they don't actually reach their prime until they're 200 years old and they can live up to 400, 500 years old. Now, once a Wookiee does pass this test, I wouldn't say that they're comfortable in walking in the Shadowlands, but it's definitely more doable. The older the Wookiee, the more knowledgeable they are about the behavioral patterns of creatures and which parts of the forest to avoid, the more likely they are to survive. It wasn't really about physical strength or fighting abilities as much as it's about what's here in your mind. Wookiees would also domesticate certain animals to allow them to get around a bit quicker. You have creatures like the Mylila, for instance, a huge cat-like creature that was very mobile and quick in a vertical environment. That was the Wookiees in a nutshell. It's not that they didn't have the ability or intelligence to create advanced technology, they did. But on Kashi, because of all the terraforming, because of all the extreme environments, usually technology failed a lot quicker than nature did. And obviously the Wookiees Depends on the Warshire Tree really did uh, force them to look at the natural world very closely. And this is why they trust their instincts and understanding of the forest rather than use machines to travel around and help them survive. So there you have it guys, the planet Akashi, one of the most terrifying places to ever visit in the Star Wars galaxy. I highly recommend you guys go and check it out if you are in the neighborhood. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button down below so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content. And as usual, my name is Alan reminding you that my allegiance is to the Republic, to democracy. See you next time.